Hey guys, today in this video we're going to talk about cell size. Um, looking at the specification of the IMAT test, there is on the biology on the part uh, the cell as the basis of life, it says cell theory, which ha we have covered, and then cell size. I'm not sure what exactly wants to the point is, so I've covered not a real word range, I'm just mentioning stuff here. First of all, I, w I have created two tables to sum up what we've learned or what we haven't learned. First of all, the human, the cell and their approximate size. The a human red blood cell is about 8 micrometers. Uh, the e. Coli, e. coli bacterium is approximately 0.3 micrometers. The HIV virus is only 130 nanometers, the sperm is 60 micrometers, while the human egg is much larger, about twice its size at 130 micrometers. And then we're going to look at the size of uh, organelles. First of all, the nucleus is about 6 micrometers, then the mitochondria 1 micrometer, chloroplast 3 to 10, lysosomes 0.1 to 0.5, the cell surface membrane is 7 nanometers thin, and it is a little bit more um, a little bit bigger, we could say, than the rest of the membranes inside the cell. The rest of the membranes inside the cell are about 4 to 5 nanometers. And the ribosome, a very small structure, is only 30 nanometers. Moving on, we're going to see why cells are small. Although various cells look different, they are all tiny. Okay, This is true because of surface area to volume ratio. When an object increases in size, both its surface area and volume increase. But, however, surface area increases more slowly than volume because surface area is a function of the square of the radius, while volume is a function of the cube of the, of the radius. So if we take into consideration this, you see, I've got a one millimeter cube. One, two, three, one millimeter, one millimeter, one millimeter. The surface area, the R is one millimeter, so it's three, six times, six sides, times one millimeter, which gives us six millimeters squared. You see here, the volume is only 1 mm square, therefore the surface area to volume ratio is 6 to 1. But if we, if we enlarge this cube, we see that this ratio decreases by much. What happens? We've got a large surface area and, and about equal volume, you see, 115 or 125. And we've got a really close ratio here, 1.2 to 1. This is not good. You know, the volume of the cell determines the amount of metabolic activity the cell carries on. However, the surface area of the plasma membrane limits the amount of material that can enter and leave the cell. So, as what we see here is that as a cell grows larger and its metabolism increases, the surface area, which is what? The plasma membrane does not keep up. So this is why complex organisms consist of millions of tiny cells carrying out different functions instead of one gigantic all-purpose cell. Okay, now generally the human body consists of approximately 200 different types. Cell types, each with a different function and therefore a different form. We're now going to talk more about the differences of animal and plant cells. And what I, when I say that animal and plant cells, I want to stress out that 
you should think yes you should think of a plant cell as being very similar to an animal cell but with extra structures so we're going to look at these extra structures okay what the what what do plant cells have don't have that animal cells have centrioles plant cells have endox but their endox are not the centriole okay so first we're going to talk about the cell wall a component missing from uh, from animal cells first of all um, the the plant cells have are surrounded by a cell wall which is outside the cell surface membrane it means outside the plasma membrane and this cell wall is not we do not, we can't confuse it with the cell surface membrane okay now this cell wall is a relatively rigid structure because it contains fibers of cellulose we have talked about it is a polysaccharide which strengthens the wall the cell wall gives the cell a definite shape it prevents the cell from bursting when water enter by osmosis allowing therefore large pressures to develop inside the cell now cell walls may also be reinforced with extracellulose or with a hard material called, called lignin for extra strength. Last but not least, cell walls are freely permeable, allowing free movement of molecules and ions through the cell to the cell surface membrane. They do not act as a barrier, they act as support, structural support. Okay, I have to see our cell walls are freely permeable, whereas cell surface membranes are partially permeable. All cells have a cell surface membrane. Otherwise, all these could go just outside. Okay, now we've got vacuoles. Although animal cells may possess small vacuoles, such as phagocytic vacuoles, which are temporary structure, mature plant cells often possess a large permanent central vacuole you see it's really large in, in, in other cells it takes most of the space here anywhere the plant vacuole is surrounded by a membrane the tonoplast which controls exchange between the vacuole and the cytoplasm the fluid in the vacuole is a solution of pigments, enzymes, sugars, and other organic compounds, including some waste products, mineral salts, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. Vacuoles help to regulate the osmotic properties of cells, as well as having a wide range of other functions. For example, the pigments which color the petals of certain flowers and parts of some vegetables, such as the red pigments of beetroot, may be located in the vacuoles and vacuoles are not confined to plant cells the last note here I, I have some notes animal cells may have small vacuoles such as phagocytic vacuoles although they're not usually permanent structures this picture is not mine and all credits go to the cambridge university press okay uh, this is all i had for you today uh, i just wanted to clear some some things that I may have not covered. Okay, so I want also to do a summary of what we have covered in our videos out of the specification. The first part is the chemistry of living things. We have covered the part that says organic molecules in organism and their respective functions and the role of enzymes. We have not covered the biological importance of weak interactions. I'm still looking into that to find better notes and I will upload a video soon. Now, in the second part, the cell is the base of life. We have covered cell theory, cell size, prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, animal and plant cells, viruses, the structure and function of cell membrane and transport across the membrane, and cellular structures and the specific functions. In the next video, 
we have covered all this. In the next video, we're going to cover the cell cycle and cell division, mitosomiosis, chromosomes, and chromosome maps. We're going to cover this part. Okay, thank you so much for watching, guys. Hit the subscribe button if you want to keep updated when I upload any videos. Bye bye.